Hi Pisces, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus. This is Dane, and I am going to be doing your June 16th to the 30th, 2021 reading for you. Now, if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will all be listed and linked in the description box below. Now, before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into this safe and loving space. Let's let the bulls sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Pisces. June 16th to the 30th, 2021 Pisces. June 16th to the 30th, 2021 Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides. Ooh, okay. Oh, that's... <laughs> it's a good bit. Let's see what our inner self has to say. Pisces, June 16th to the 30th, 2021 Pisces, June 16th to the 30th, 2021 Pisces, June 16th to the 30th, 2021 Pisces, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly, guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides. Pisces. June 16th to the 30th, 2021 Pisces. June 16th to the 30th, 2021 Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Pisces. June 16th to the 30th, 2021 Pisces. June 16th to the 30th, 2021, Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. At our root is our, at our bottom, at our root right here is our rooted self. At the left-hand side is our inner self, the middle, the heart, the emotional self, the right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what spirit has to say. We have the nine of wands, the two of swords, the eight of swords, and the king of swords. The king of swords is air sign energy, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius coming through. If we're born on the cusp with Aquarius or if we have Aquarius within our chart, that's going to be coming through very, very powerfully. And our mind, we're going to be a lot in our own heads during this time. And we've also been taking in a lot from everybody, everybody's disapproving look, everybody's words, everybody's everything. So do be mindful of that because we can really, during this time, just take everything in and hold it in and be like, okay, this is all truth. And we have to kind of sift through what is truth, what is valuable information, what isn't. And that's going to be very important. Then we have our inner selves. 
We have the Emperor, which is Aries energy, March 21st to April 19th. If you're born on the cusp with Aries, this part of your personality is going to be coming through very profoundly, or if you have Aries within your chart. We then have the Seven of Cups, which is choices, but it's also our dreams coming forward, and it's being able to, to claim a throne that brings us our dreams. And then we have temperance, harmony, harmony with the waking world and with the, the spirit world, harmony with the subconscious and conscious self of ourselves. Harmony needs to be a part of us. And we can find that harmony to just be a little bit elusive during this time because we do have the eight of swords and the nine of wands here. This is also Sagittarius energy, time frame November 22nd to December 21st. Then we have the Ace of Wands, God, Source, Spirit, however you see the divine, the universe, handing us a gift of passion, of creativity, of insights, of power, of, of force, and also the Ten of, of Pentacles. This is prosperity, success, bounty that lasts for generations. So that's really quite beautiful. Then we have our inner self, not the inner self, our public arena. We start off with the Queen of Wands, Fire, Sign, Energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Then we have the lovers, Gemini energy, amplifying that Gemini presence within our chart. They're represented by the swords in the minor arcana, the lovers in the major arcana. Time frame for Gemini is May 21st to June 20th. The wheel of fortune and the six of wands, being able to celebrate ourselves. So that's really quite, quite powerful. We do have two major arcana cards in our public arena and as we have it within our inner self. So this is going to be a highly impactful time for us in the public arena and within our inner selves. And a lot of times what we come to the conclusion of as true always, what we come to the conclusion of within our inner selves, this is actually going to be a time, no, this isn't always. This is going to be a time where we see ourselves acting this out. Whereas a lot of times we can come to conclusions within our own head and be like, oh, okay, this is what I'm doing. And then kind of lose interest or not follow through or you know something else comes up and we can't get to it. But this is going to be a time where if we can, you know, with what we're, what's balancing us, with what's bringing us power, if we can act it out, and we're going to have the very strong urge to act it out within our lives, that's going to be a game changer. And it's going to be really quite profound. Now let's look at our chakra energy. Pisces, June 16th to 30th, 2021 Pisces. June 16th to 30th, 2021 Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels, truth, the third chakra. To be able to speak truth and to follow through on this truth is going to be intrinsically important to us during this time. We think of the third chakra, we think of speaking. We don't ever think of truth. But to speak the truth is going to be a challenge and it's going to be a godsend is what spirit is saying. It's going to be freeing, it's going to be liberating, and it's going to be powerful. So it doesn't mean that we have to tell everybody the truth exactly as we see it every moment of the day because that could get us in a lot of trouble. But what it is here is saying, this is what is true for me. This is what I need. This is what I desire. And just being really open and honest with ourselves, saying, you know what, that's not the right fit. And I'm not going to do that. Or this is the right fit and I am going to do this. And just having that open conversation with ourselves is going to be quite empowering and very emboldening, emboldening for us. Now let us see the energy we need to be mindful of. What is the energy that Pisces needs to be mindful of? June 16th to the 30th, 2021 Pisces. What is the energy that Pisces needs to be mindful of? June 16th to the 30th, 2021 Pisces. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading. The moon, ourselves. Our own fears getting in our way, which is something that Pisces just has to be mindful of in general because we can get too much in our own heads. We can say, oh my gosh, it, it has to be like this or oh my gosh, it, this, is, this is the only way it could possibly be. And so with getting too much in our own heads, with, with letting fear be the driving force, we can see ourselves losing ourselves. And that's going to be something that we need to be mindful of. We need to be mindful of why we're headed this way our subconscious and our conscious self. We have to call ourselves out. This is why the truth is going to be so important to us. You know, am I self-sabotaging? Am I letting other people's words, doubts, fears take over and be a part of myself? Am I too much in my own head that I'm overthinking it so much that I will never just just do it, just, just go for it? So that is going to be something that is, yeah, that, that needs to be addressed. 
so that we can move forward. Now, it can be that we're drawn to other Pisces energies because, you know, likes attract likes. And that person has a lot of fear and brings a lot of fear to the table or brings a lot of doubt or has us doubting ourselves. So we just have to be mindful of this because it can manifest in many different ways in our lives. And so this is going to be a time where we have to find that balance of it. We have to find the, the harmonizing factor of ourselves here. And we start off with the Nine of Wands, which is not a harmonizing card at all. It is a card that makes us look at the hardships and the pains and the disappointments and the fights and the, and the battles that we have been through. And it's also everybody's information coming at us. It's like, oh, you should do this. And oh, you should do that. And you'll be happy if you do this. And you'll be happy if you do that. It's like, no, stop. <laughs> stop. Let me find my balance. Let me see what I desire. Let me look at the way I need to move forward. And it's not, not taking anybody's advice. It really is taking people's advice, but it's listening to those who are worth listening to. And sometimes we have to listen to those who really aren't worth listening to, to be able to find, you know, the pearls within the oyster, to be able to find the real gems to move forward with. This is also a time where we need to look at what we want, what we desire ourselves, and we need to stand firm in our beliefs, in what's intrinsically true for us. And it brings us to the two of swords. If we can stand tall, when really what we want to do is just kind of like fall down and hold our heads and be like, la, 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 la. If we can stand tall, we start to see within our own minds, we start to see new pathways forward. We start to see things opening up that we hadn't thought of before. But we're also, I just see this as a scissor, like we're cutting through so much that isn't a part of us that we, we don't want, we don't need. And we, we are leaving behind. So that's going to be really important. You can see yourself during this time at the roots. It's like, I'm cutting out things that aren't necessary. It could be decluttering. It could be, you know, reorganizing things. It could be a whole bunch of things. But we're just going to see new pathways opening up as we release things that we thought we'd always hold on to. And it brings us to the Eight of Swords. And the Eight of Swords is, is feeling trapped. It's feeling overwhelmed. It's doubts and it's fears and it's chaos and it's hurt and it's pain. And people live their whole lives in the Eight of Swords. People live their whole lives in the, in the Nine of Wands, listening to everybody else and never knowing their own voice. So this is a time where we're faced with challenges that take other people down. They just really do keep other people from living the lives that they want to. With the Eight of Swords, we feel trapped. We're tied. You know, here if you untied her hair or just cut it off, could she float away? Could she be free that way? And would she come back down to earth and then see that the spaces between the swords are big enough just to walk through? What if we're told you're trapped? You know, this is the societal norm. This is the way that you're supposed to be. This is X, Y, Z. And so we feel that trap coming around us and we just accept it because that's what we're supposed to do. What if we look at things in a different way and say, huh, I'm not trapped. There's more here than meets the eye. There's power and there's, there's, there's more to me. And I'm, I'm breaking the bonds. And I'm moving forward. Period. End of discussion. The Eight of Swords, we're not seeing things clearly. We feel bound. We feel trapped. It can feel like the world's getting smaller and smaller and smaller around us. This is a time where we need to step back. And we need to either embrace meditation or something that lets us get out of our own head. It could be exercising, meditation, you know, gardening, whatever it is, to recharge our batteries and help us to see things not through the haze, you know, or not at all as it, as it truly is. So be mindful of that. And we can, it's very easy for us during this time here at Pisces to take somebody else's word over our own, to say, you know what, you're right. You've, you've always been right. You know, I'm just, I'm just going to do this because it feels, it feels easier than making the decision for ourselves. So just be mindful of that. The King of Swords coming through. Now it can be an air sign energy that we're listening to over ourselves, but there is also a sense of needing to be fierce. The King of Swords is seen. And during this time, because we have the King of Swords and we have the, the, the Emperor, we're going to be seen for what grounds us and for who we are inside. In the public arena, we're not going to be seen as much because we're going to be more behind the scenes. So do be mindful of that. But with the King of Swords, it's cutting through doubts and fears. It's knowing what we desire. It's looking at things openly and honestly. But it's also the time and the effort that it takes to be a swordsman. The King of Swords 
is the only king that holds a weapon. You can argue the staffs are a weapon, yes, but they're a learner weapon, and they're also a poorer weapon, not to sound, you know, classist or whatever, but the swords, that was for nobility. In medieval times, you could be killed for owning a sword if you were not a noble. So here, or, you know, yeah, a noble or part of the army, but I believe it was just simply a noble. Here, we have power. We have force. We have, you know, a knowing of mind and a, a passion of spirit. That's what we're embracing. And as we embrace this, we embrace ourselves. We see ourselves moving forward. We cut through a lot of the nonsense. We're going to say, and we're going to find ourselves saying, I just want to know the facts. I just want to know what I need to know. Not everything else in between. I just want the truth. And this is going to be a time where we just need to speak the truth to ourselves. And it starts to become the greatest weapon that we have. We can also find that our tongue can be a bit of a weapon. So be mindful of your words during this time, Pisces. The emperor, maturity, claiming a throne, sitting upon the throne, saying, this is what I want. This is who I am. And that's it, period, end of discussion. We could steal the throne, <laughs> which is always a way to go about things. But if we take somebody else's throne, if we say, okay, I see how they did it, and I'm just going to copy them. It's not going to fit right for us. We have to take with passion and with intensity and, you know, follow through what we want, what we desire. And that's what the emperor is all about. The emperor represents Ares, and Ares is the god of war. So to have that follow through, to charge forward, to go after what we want, to go after what we need, that's quintessential to the emperor. And that's also quintessential to maturity. And knowing what we want and what we desire. And it brings us to the Seven of Cups, which says choices here, but it's also, it's dreams. It's, it's hopes, it's wishes, it's everything in between. The Seven of Cups is the sense of there's more and has been hidden to me. And why has it been hidden? Because have I had the wisdom to claim it? Have I had the wisdom to move forward in this direction? Do I know what I want? Do I know what I desire? Do I know what I need? Are my dreams being muddled before me? How do I seize this? And it brings us to temperance. And that's one of the things that we have to balance. How do we seize our dreams? How do we seize the path that we want? And it's falling into balance, into harmony with ourself. Temperance is not, not going to extremes, but finding the middle ground that is right for us. It's like, it's not going through the manic moments where we're riding these beautiful highs. And the depressant moments where we're hitting these, these rock bottoms. And now if we are manic depressant, that's a completely different thing. But what this is saying here is just be very mindful because it will be very easy for us to ride highs and then to, to crash down because either we've overworked ourselves, we've burnt the candle at both ends, we haven't been kind to ourselves. So we have to be mindful of this. We have to be mindful of the kind, harmonious balance that our bodies need, that our souls need, and that our inspiration needs. Because we're calling the dreams out of darkness and into the light. And that's bringing us to a place emotionally of passion, of insight, of a fire and focus. Emotionally, we can be powerhouses, Pisces, because we are, we are water sign energies. And when the fire comes in, when the wands come in, that can boil the water. It can really get us going. But it can also evaporate us, make us burn out. So as we take this passion as we look at our dreams and what gets us out of the bed in the morning and, you know, our focus and our purpose and what we desire, we start to see ourselves being more and more inspired, moving forward in a greater way. But we have to let this shine. And we also have to let it not become all-encompassing because we will have that tendency during that time to just say, light it all on fire, let the barn fire go. But a barn fire burns quickly, right? And, and it burns for quite a while. But if you use all that wood, it won't last, as if you had a smaller firewood. And this is what's bringing us to the Ten of Cups, to the Ten of Cups, to the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles is prosperity that lasts for generations. It's wisdom that sees what can't be seen and what the rest of the world might not be paying attention to at all. So this is a time where we look at our wealth, we look at our prosperity, we look at our bounty, and we start to see things in a different way. We're going to be very drawn to ancient wisdom. Let that guide us. It can also be that we get advice from elders, from people who are older, who are more experienced, who have lived more, and, and they can see things. 
They can see things that we ourselves cannot because we're so busy in the here and now. So do pay attention to that. It's going to be powerful, insightful, and, and astoundingly beneficial. There's also wealth coming in. I don't see it as an inheritance. I see it as almost like you have, I don't see it as a financial inheritance, though I do wish that upon each and every one of you. What I see it as is more of you have the spark of an ancestor within you. And if you connect with that spark, and if you let that energy kind of flow through you, and you say, well, what is it that we're supposed to connect, like create, and how are we supposed to connect? You will start to see that grow more and more and more. It, it, it's interesting. It, it's not what I see often. So I would highly take advantage of this in, in any way, in any form, to be able to move forward. And then we have the Queen of Wands. We're going to be seen as highly creative people during this time, people who aren't afraid to roll their sleeves up, get their hands dirty, but also people who don't need the limelight. This is not a me, 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 me time. And so if we find ourselves going down that way, we're letting the ego come in way too much. We're feeling trapped and overwhelmed, which is going to make us say, well, what about me? What about me? So here, kind of stepping back, that's going to be really important. The Queen of Wands always makes me think of Hestia in Greek mythology. And she was the goddess who could have been one of the main goddesses, but chose to be a lesser one to prevent a war. So we're going to see ourselves here, have opportunities maybe for greater things, but the consequence of those greater things might be too much for us. We're not willing to pay it. With the Queen of Wands, we need to embrace our passion, our desire, and our focus. There's something magical about us. And we need to let that magic shine. There's a different way that we see things that moves us forward in a way that can kind of take our breath away. We're definitely taking this gift. It's definitely coming from the heart because we have the ace of, of wands, you know, and we have the queen of wands. So this gift and this passion is coming from the heart. We need to embrace it and we need to figure out how to work with it. It's going to be like, it's going to be something new that we're not used to working with. So just be, be mindful of that, that we, we might be thinking, oh, I'm doing the exact right thing, but it has to be molded differently. I just see it like working with stone or with clay or with some element that we're not used to handling. And it's tricky. It's tricky at first. It brings us to the lovers. It brings us to calling love and passion into our lives. It brings us to a sense of understanding that there's a multitude of different ways of seeing things. There's a multitude of different passions that lead every single person forward. And how do I embrace that love? How do I embrace that connection? How do I move to where I want to be, to how I want to be within my life? The lovers calls us to have an open mind, to see things with love and honor and respect for all people, not just for anybody who agrees like us. And there's a sense of the love coming back into our waking world. We might have thought like life had just lost its sparkle a bit or the colors had become muted. This is a time where we start to see the love coming back, the passion coming back, the beauty coming back. And it's showing us that we're entering into a new season. And my favorite birds are sparrows, so I really like this, where we're entering into this new season, this new idea, this new kind of coming together. And it's like, oh my goodness, I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't know it could be like this. I didn't know that I could move forward this way. I didn't, I didn't see this before. And so the, the Wheel of Fortune brings forward new fortune for us. It brings forward a new a place for which we stand. And what's going to happen with that is that it can be a place of great bounty. And it can be a place of, of figuring, out, figuring things out, like needing to step back and needing to commune with ourselves. So it can either be, you know, a summer or it can be a winter. And we have to see what season we're entering into, what our soul is calling us to do and how our soul is calling us to move forward and to connect and really embrace that, really embrace the change that is coming and not, and not fight the season that we, we are now standing in. And it moves us then to the Six of Wands. If we can fall into alignment with what divinity is telling us, with this spiritual understanding of ourselves, we can start moving forward in victory in success, in passion, in power, in, in greater understanding. And we start to hold our heads a bit higher, say, yes, I can, instead of, no, I can't. And all of a sudden, we exude this air 
of, of confidence and success. And we want to keep that going because that's, that success is going to, to open up doors. It just, it just really is. Our subconscious chakra message is forgiveness, the heart chakra. It is going to be so important for us to look inward and to forgive who we are and who we were. To forgive others, yes, but that always seems a bit magnanimous. You know, I've forgiven you. I now take the power. I forgave you. When we look at ourselves and say, I forgive me for making those choices. I forgive me for being finding myself in that situation. I forgive me for things being absolutely out of my control. I forgive me for, for being young. I forgive me for, for everything, for falling in love, for anything that we need to. It can sound so silly to say, I forgive me for being young because it's like, you know, what the heck else were you supposed to be? But our mind isn't always logical. That's why we need help and guidance with it at times. And so forgiveness comes and it's the most powerful thing that we can give ourselves. It's the greatest gift that can open our hearts and empower our souls. And so it moves us then to our subconscious energy to be mindful of, which is the Hierophant. The Hierophant is being mindful of the fact that we think at times that force equals right, that we, that we get caught up in other people's rules and, and dogma and exact ways of doing things. So we need to be mindful of that because, again, that, that will be a bit easier. It's like, okay, I have all these rules to follow, and if I just follow this, everything will be fine. Or if I just do exactly what this person says, everything will be fine. And there's no ex exploration of soul and self that needs to be in order to free us. Because it's almost like we're taking rules over, over us. With the, with the Hierophant, in its positive form, it's saying, I'm listening to me. I'm listening to the joys, to the blessings, to the hurts, to the pains. In its negative form, I'm just plowing ahead. I just, I just need to keep on plowing and plowing and plowing ahead. And it doesn't matter what comes in my way. It doesn't matter what tries to stop me. I'm just going to keep on going. And that can be absolutely exhausting. Our subconscious rooted message is the Nine of Swords. At our roots, again, this is nightmares coming up. This is being in our own head. This is not being able to sleep at night. This is worry, doubt, fear, chaos. We have to be mindful of this. We have to take care of ourselves. At our root, it is going to be so easy for us to just kind of like throw the baby out with the bathwater and just keep on, on plowing forward. Just keep on, you know, going even when we're running on empty, even when any, everything inside of us is screaming, no, 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 no. We're going to think, no, 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 I just need to keep on doing this. And the big thing is we don't. We don't. We need to step back. We need to heal. We need to connect. And we need to open our hearts. Our subconscious public arena is the page of wands, innocence. We can almost feel like with the coming of maturity, because we have maturity here with the, the emperor, the innocence is lost. That the beautiful carefreeness of childhood or the beautiful innocence of expression is no longer there. And that cannot be further from the truth. What we are losing is naivety, is a sense of thinking everything will just work out for the best. What we're gaining is a bit of harsh reality, but it also lets us be a better student of where I want to be, of what I desire, of the dreams where I was younger, which couldn't seem, can seem a bit foolish now, to the practicality of today and the hopes and the desires that I have. It moves us then to our heart and that's the Ten of Swords. Every year a lesson learned that was heartbreaking, overwhelming, traumatizing, made us doubt ourselves. And now this is the darkness before the dawn. This is the rising with a wealth of knowledge that once brought us to our knees and is now showing us that if I can live through this, I can do anything. Isn't that a song? <laughs> you believe it is. And that's what we're going to see here. Power and intensity and focus. Realizing 
that we are stronger and better equipped than those around us. It brings us to our subconscious inner self, which is the Eight of Cups, walking away from what we once thought we would love. Sometimes an ending is not a sad thing, but it is a beautiful thing because it brings us into the realm of a new beginning and it takes us from our past to our present in a profound and enticing way. The Eight of Cups is an end and we might be mourning that end, but it's powerful and, and forceful within us. So subconsciously in the public arena, we need to walk away. We need to walk away from something, doubts, fears, maybe even some dreams that we have that we realize mm, that's really not going to fit me and move into ourselves with more passion and more security of being. All right, Pisces, I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I am sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all, and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as, as we embrace the ferocity of our spirit and, and the beauty of our dreams. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Pisces.